The Game Boy Color was an 8-bit handheld game console developed by Nintendo. It's one of the most iconic handheld consoles of all time and definitely worthy of some vector treatment. So sit back and let's create a Nintendo Game Boy Color from scratch using Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so once you're in Illustrator, you want to create a new document. The document size I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels, but realistically, you can use a document of any size. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using a Game Boy reference image. Now, this image is just something I grabbed off Google Images. So, head straight over to Google Images and grab yourself an appropriate image. Once you've pasted the image into your artboard, double click on the image layer and you want to just put a little tick in the template box and then we want to dim the image to around 50% and then press OK and before we jump straight in with the pen tool the first thing we want to do is just create a center guide which sits in the center of our template so press Control R on the keyboard to bring up the rulers then simply click and drag a guide into the center of the template Holding the shift key will make the guide snap into place. Once it's in the center, just let go and then press Ctrl on the keyboard again, just to remove the rulers from view. And the reason we're creating this center guide is because the Game Boy is pretty much symmetrical, we only really need to create the one side of the shape and then we'll flip it over and join it in the middle to form a complete shape. So select the pen tool, which is shortcut P on the keyboard. And we want to flip a solid fill over to a stroke using the color black. And then we want to go to window and select your stroke panel. Within the stroke panel, we want to set the stroke weight to 10 points. And we want to use a rounded cap and a rounded join. And then simply zoom in and start from the guide and either start creating the left hand side or creating the right hand side it's completely up to you there's no preference but make sure you start from the guide and then just block out the initial shape Once you've blocked out the main shape, drop the stroke weight down to five points and then begin to do the outer screen and then the inner screen part as these are also symmetrical. If you roughly block it out as a square and then select the direct selection tool which is shortcut A on the keyboard, highlight one of the corners and then use the corner radius handle to simply round off the square corners and you can select multiple points and do both at the same time. Next we're going to make a selection around our three paths which we've created so far. And then right click on one of the paths and go to transform and then select reflect we want to reflect it vertically and then we just want to select the copy option to create a copy and while everything's still selected just move everything to the right hand side hold on the shift key will snap it into place once you've moved it zoom into one of the points hold down the control key put your mouse over one of the points and then click and drag until it snaps into the center guide. Once it snaps into the center guide, let go, and then that should be positioned perfectly. From this point, we can remove our guide. So from within the layers window, select the guide and then just delete that with the recycle button. Using the direct selection tool, which is shortcut A on the keyboard, we want to select the two joining anchor points at the top and then press Ctrl J on the keyboard 
and what that will do is it will join the two points together and then we want to repeat that for each point which needs to be joined. Now that all the paths have been joined we just want to do a bit of clean up work towards the bottom of the screen and the bottom of the actual main shape. So select the hyphen shortcut key which is the remove anchor point tool and we just want to remove the center anchor point from the bottom and the center anchor point from the bottom of the screen. Then we want to head over to the curvature tool which is this little icon underneath the pen tool. And then we just want to re-add an anchor point in the center and then just drag it down just to make that path curved. With the overall shape now complete, using the same methods we can now start creating the paths for the D-pad, the four buttons and obviously the power lot. Once you've added those few details, make a selection around everything and then go to Object Group. Rename the group layer to something like Line Art and then simply drag the layer group over to the plus symbol at the bottom of the Layers window. And what that will do is that will just duplicate that whole group. To the right side of the little eye icon, you should see a blank square. Select that blank square just to lock that Line Art layer in its, into place. And then rename the duplicated layer to something like colors. To the right hand side of the colors layer you'll see the little circle icon. What you want to do is just select that which will select all the paths within that group and then you just want to remove the stroke and then just change it to any solid fill color just to fill all those shapes. And of course you'll still see the outlines as this is controlled by the line art layer. Next, using the direct selection tool, which is shortcut A on the keyboard, what we want to do is select the individual shapes. So for instance, the body of the Game Boy, and then press I on the keyboard for the color picker tool. And then you just want to fill the shape with your designated color. The colors I'm using are some pre-selected colors. So I've got the dark purple for the, obviously the main body of the Game Boy. And then I've got a slighter, lighter variant of that color for things like the highlights and that'll be the same for the grey colour. Once you've chosen the base colours for the elements on the Game Boy, what we need to do now is start adding some of the finer details. Things like the uh, power wording, the letters on the buttons and obviously the Game Boy Colour logo and the Nintendo logo. So first off, I'm just going to lock and hide the line art colors layer and then i'm going to drag in the nintendo logo and the game boy color logo these are just images which i got off google images and what we're going to do is use the image trace tool to turn these into vector shapes so i'll start off by opening the image trace tool and to get to the image trace tool you need to go to window image trace select one of the logos and then choose one of the presets at the top because we want to keep the colors for the game boy logo we want to use the high color option and then what that will do is it will just trace the logo and turn it into editable shapes once the overall look is okay just press expand at the top to confirm the trace and then what we want to do is we want to remove the white parts of the logo so it's transparent so using the direct selection tool which is shortcut and the keyboard simply select the background of the logo and then hit the delete key and then what we want to do is because this is not a compound path make a selection around everything shift m on the keyboard for the shape builder tool and then we just want to remove by holding down the alt key the center parts of each word and then repeat the same process for the nintendo logo select the relevant logo and then zoom into the reference image and just place the logos where you'd expect them to be once you're happy with the positioning unhide the line art and the colors layer remove the padlock from the template layer and then double click on the template group and then just untick the template and then press OK. And then what we want to do is just move the reference image to the right and then just re-put the padlock in there to lock it into its place. Now what we want to do is start adding some of these smaller details 
like the triangles on the D-pad, the A and B letters, select and start and the power text. And we can simply do this using a combination of the pen tool and the type tool. Next we're going to start adding some of the highlights to the game board. So before we do that just make a selection around everything and then press Ctrl G on the keyboard. And then we just want to label this group as elements. Lock the elements layer into its place and then unhide the or unlock the colors layer. With the colors layer unlocked what we can do is using the direct selection tool which is shortcut on the keyboard is select our base shape, go to edit copy and then edit paste in place and then go to edit paste in place again move the shape to the left holding down the shift key to snap it into its horizontal position and then select both shapes so both the duplicated shapes shift m on the keyboard for the shape builder tool and then what you want to do is hold down the alt key and then remove the left shape and the right shape the shape that's left over we want to fill with our light color and then we want to select our layer and move it on top of our base layer. And then we want to repeat the same steps then for our D-pad, our two A and B buttons and the select and start buttons. And then finally all that's left to do is add any further highlights and shading that you want and then change the colour of the black elements to match that of our reference image. That's it for this week's video, hopefully you've learned something new. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to stick around for more design related tutorials, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.